The dog-headed men are a curiosity from our distant past that I don't see getting much discussion among paranormal YouTubers. Many historical accounts and many illustrations exist of these strange peoples, and these historical accounts seem to be written with 100% seriousness. There is, of course, the depictions created by the Egyptians and beyond of supernatural beings with dog or jackal heads. But moving beyond that to history as recent as medieval times, we have multiple accounts from relatively respected sources that describe these strange men. We have, of course, the interesting orthodox depictions of St. Christopher that prominently display the holy man with the head of a dog. St. Christopher was a martyr killed during the reign of the 3rd century Roman Emperor Decius. Interestingly, his most famous legend tells that he carried a child who was unknown to him across a river before the child revealed himself as Christ. Therefore, he is the patron saint of travelers, and small images of him are often worn around the neck or carried in the pocket. The German bishop and poet Walter of Speyer portrayed St. Christopher as a giant man with a dog's head, who ate human flesh and barked. Eventually, Christopher met Christ, repented his former behavior, and received baptism, and as such was rewarded with a human appearance. But back to the other historical accounts of these dog-headed men. Many scholars claim to encounter these dog-headed men near India, and interestingly, these scholars did not have any contact with each other, and it is unlikely that they were aware of each other's work. Our first example, Ibn Battuta, was a Moroccan scholar that claims to have encountered these dog-mouthed people on his travels. I will read you his account now. Fifteen days after leaving Sunaradiwan, we reached the country of <laughs> Bara Kanar, whose mouths are like those of dogs. This tribe is a rabble, professing neither the religion of the Hindus nor any other. They live in reed huts roofed with grasses on the seashore, and have abundant banana, areca, and patel trees. Their men are shaped like ourselves, except that their mouths are shaped like those of dogs. This is not the case with their women folk, however, who are endowed with surpassing beauty. Their men, too, go unclothed not even hiding their nakedness except occasionally for an ornamental pouch of reeds suspended from their waist. The women wear aprons of leaves of trees. With them reside a number of Muslims from Bengal and Sumatra who occupy a separate quarter. The natives do all their trafficking with the merchants on the shore and bring them water on elephants because the water is at some distance from the coast and they will not let the merchants go to draw it for themselves fearing for their women because they make advances to well-formed for, well men. Elephants are numerous in their land, but no one may dispose of them except the sultan, from whom they are brought in exchange for woven stuffs. Furthermore, Paul the Deacon was a Benedictine monk and scribe that rendered his educated services to the Lombards in Italy. He wrote many texts, but the one that contains the passage that is most interesting to me is called the Historia Gentis Langobardorum. I will read this passage to you now. Sino Cephali, that is, men with dogs' heads. They spread the rumor among the enemy that these men wage war obstinately, drink human blood, and quaff their own gore if they cannot reach the foe. Interestingly, around the same time, at the court of Charlemagne, the Norse were given this attribution, which implies to me that it may have been a way to defame pagan peoples. It is interesting, however, that this attribution was used by primarily Muslim and Christian peoples against the outsiders of their faith. And to me, this makes it seem that there is something more to this than pure slanderous fabrication. The 9th century Frankish theologian Ratramnus wrote a letter, Do the dog-headed men have souls? Fittingly, this letter was all about whether or not the dog-headed men should be considered human. I won't read you the letter here as it would take up the better part of 10 minutes, but I will provide a link in the description if you want to explore this further. But spoiler alert, he thought that they were humans, and that it was Christian's duty to preach the Gospels to them. Uh, Thomas of Cantempre, Cantempre? Thomas of Cantempre corroborated the existence of dog-headed men in his book, Monstrous Men of the Orient. The 13th century encyclopedist Vincent of Beauvais acquainted his patron Saint Louis, of, Saint Louis the Ninth of France with an animal with the head of a dog, but with all other members of human appearance. Though he behaves like a man, and when peaceful, he is tender like a man, when furious, he becomes cruel and retaliates on humankind. Uh, the Anglo-Saxon epic Beowulf also contains references to the dog-headed men, 
One such reference can be found in the part of the manuscript known as the Wonders of the East, in which they are called half-dogs. Also, in Anglo-Saxon England, the Old English word wolf's heofod, wolf's head, was a technical term for an outlaw who could be killed as if he were a wolf. Dog-headed men also appear in the Old Welsh poem Pogger and are referred to as dogheads. Here they are enemies of King Arthur and his bannermen. Arthur's men fight them in the mountains near Edinburgh, and hundreds of them fall at the hand of Arthur's friend Bedivere. Marco Polo also claims to have met these strange peoples. Marco said that although these people grow the spices we seek, they are nonetheless cruel and behave just like unruly mastiff dogs. One Italian monk by the name of Odoric of Pordion, is that how that's pronounced? I hope so, who traveled about converting people between 1317 and 1330, claimed to have come across the dog-headed men at the island of Nicovern. They were described as being somewhat brutish, but contrary to some of the other accounts, this time they displayed a form of organized religion, worshipping oxen and wearing various gold and silver religious charms. A French inquisitor, Cardinal Pierre, also claimed in 1410 that there existed a race of dog-headed humans in India. There are countless accounts of these strange creatures. Even the famed explorer Christopher Columbus makes mention of such creatures. Upon landing in Haiti, then called Bohio, he writes of creatures the locals described as dog-headed monsters with one eye upon their foreheads. Again, similar to the other accounts, these creatures were said to prey on humans. However, Columbus would later express skepticism of the existence of such creatures and expressed as much in a letter to Queen Isabella of Spain. Such mysterious creatures, dog-headed men, had become lost to the unending flow of time. What is it that caused them to become so commonly reported throughout history? Was this just fantastical whimsy and imagination? We may never know for sure, but the various accounts of these creatures are no doubt interesting. Alright, thank you for watching another episode of Late Night Paranormal here on Swab Midnight. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video.